Hey there, Builder Blog. So I wanted to go over, this week I'm building Swish. I am building Swish, and I'm doing this in a very backwards way that I think a lot of people will not understand. Um, one of the ways I decorate my robots is with these awesome, awesome graphics I actually get from a website. And they, uh, they make these internal stickers that's what's really neat about them, is they're not on the outside of the armor, they're on the inside. And so they don't get scratched up and they don't fall off your robot. And uh, I've been so happy with them, using them for years. A lot of my robot themes are around the specific sticker patterns they use. And I, I've actually purchased every single pattern they sell. Um, it's an RC car sticker company, and yes, that is the name. And I'm going to tell everyone to be extremely careful typing that into Google. Um, make sure you get the whole name, otherwise you might end up somewhere you don't like. I really wish... One of the reasons I've never told people where I get my stickers is I never wanted to recommend to parents and children to try type tip triple X into Google. But um, they make all these different amazing sheets. And... I'm eventually going to make robots out of all of them. But specifically, when I got pitched Swish, our, our new green dragon, there was one sheet I've been trying to figure out what to do with. And the amazing wings they drew in their picture look just like the wings in this pattern. And so today, I am going to be using the sticker sheet and measuring off this sticker sheet to design our next robot. And that way it's going to get some awesome graphics. Now I know our original artist wanted the robot to be green, but I'm gonna change it to blue and get some awesome, awesome dragon decals. And it'll still be a dragon robot. It'll still be an awesome dragon robot. Just a blue dragon robot. All right, let's cut to the CAD and see how you design around a sticker sheet. Okay, so I'm here at my computer and I'm going to use these stickers on the head, and then I'm going to cut the head off here, and then use this sticker and that long tail for the front body. I'm probably gonna snip the tail there, and then, then use this on the bottom part of the jaw sticking out. So that's my overall plan. So I'm going to physically actually measure these stickers, and we're gonna take those dimensions and put it into the AutoCAD. Oh, and one more thing while I'm here measuring stickers, a lot of people may see I'm on my open sauce mat doing my work. I've got all my parts to measure here. Um, we will be at open sauce next week. And so if you guys would like a chance to meet me, Diana, Scorpios, and a bunch of other BattleBot contestants, I know Bunny and Ray Billings are both going to be there, along with a lot of other builders and the Bot Whisperer. Um, I'm hoping maybe I'll get another cool, awesome floor mat. See, BattleBots even had cats, live things, robots fighting, giant shoes, battling to the death. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to open sauce. We'll also have a Bot Bash Arena, and you'll get to drive, hopefully, this robot. So come on down and check it out. So I know that might look kind of weird, but this is the start of our mighty dragon. And I thought I'd take a moment to explain my thought process here. So... In order to get the dimensions I need, I'm going to be using these random parts, which I sh are not very random, they're the parts that make the robot work. We're going to put the drive motor here, the wheel here, the Mlanky board all the way in the back between the two motors, and the battery is going to be in the upper jaw. I'm going to take a little bit of Kraken's aesthetic here as I'm trying to make bring that drawing to life, and we're going to actually hide the servo completely in the head. So instead of trying to put the big servo in the body, which would lower the center of gravity and make it wheelie less, um, I'm going to put it in the head to hopefully shrink the whole thing. I've been making a lot of really large robots lately, but I want to see if I can take this opportunity to try to make a smaller one, especially a smaller one running on these new rev motors. I kind of want to see with a smaller robot and a really high gear ratio if I can make a nice, quick, fast thing. So. When I design the front end of this, it needs to be as wide as the battery. When I decide the length of this, it needs to be the length of this motor. So I'm going to use measuring with calipers to turn 
this quick sketch that I'm going to mirror over into the start of our body. Let's call that 1.5. So from here to here, I need one and a half inches. Yay, screwed up. Means this has to be at least two inches. And then let's see how long that battery is. Battery is a little over two inches. Let's call that two and a quarter. So I also need room for the Malinky board. So let's call it three and a quarter. That stretched my part a lot. All right, and the diameter of the motor has to be able to fit in the back of that at the thinnest part. So that's five eighths, let's call it three quarters. So we have some room. Uh, actually, let's just call it seven eighths. So from here to here, we need at least seven eighths. And then I want this to be jutted forward a little bit. So that has to be greater than 7 eighths. Let's call it an inch and see what that looks like. Nah, it's not enough of a front angle for me. Let's go 0.25. And right now we are literally sculpting the robot. Uh, let's widen this just a little bit. Let's say 2.125. All right, and how far out do I want to stretch this? Let's do three sixteenths. Okay, now we're gonna take this, mirror it, and see if we can hollow it all out. But that's how I take my parts, and I get my rough outline of the base. From rough sketch, to measuring parts, to actual CAD. All right guys, I got my base frame here. This is a convoluted mess drawing. You can tell just by the fact my tree is so long. Um, but I've got the spots to put the power switch, uh, motor, motor, holes, holes, and I'm just going to print this right now as is, uh, so I can show you guys the technique of mounting the panels with the stickers. Once again, I have run out of time. I actually threw out my back this week and I've been doing all of this in excruciating pain. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I didn't finish it guys, but I do need to put my health first. Next week is open sauce. If you want to see me, come on down and I'm sure I will have this robot ready because I want to have a new robot for open sauce. Though we do have carbon fighter, tidal wave, and the cake, but I don't want to leave out swish. So let's go through, let's let the printer print. Printer print. All right, let's go clean out the fill and see how this fits. Okay, everybody. So I was able to fit the Malenki and a battery into this compartment. I think I did make this too small. Um, and I know it's yellow. Eventually, this is just my test print. I will make this in um, the Mark Forge material and make all my other robots in. But while I'm just testing to see if <coughs> things fit, I do this. And I know some people will say, Hey, Zach, this is what um, that assembly feature on your CAD software is for. Yeah, but I actually like to see how the wires fit and everything else, and this is only like $4 of filament. So uh, to print it out and actually see how things fit and put the things in the thing is worth it to me. And I can learn and then print in the expensive material. So our next step is we're going to cut up the stickers, which I've already Martha Stewart did here. So here's the head we're going to put on the front. Here is the awesome wings that... I do need to actually cut that head off because this is going to go right here. And I kind of want to see how this scales. And last but not least, we're going to take this tail portion and it is going to run down this front piece. So let's make some quick Lexan panels and see how this fits. So I've made a little Lexan panel to go here and we're going to put this tail piece on it. So what we do is you first peel and then we 
peel the sticker. Really cool about these is the sticky side has all the coloring to it. Oh yeah, look at that texture and scales. So I've applied this onto my armor panel and I'm just gonna cut off a little bit of the extra here with scissors. And then we're going to stick it on the robot. It's already starting to look super cool. And that is just looking beautiful. Now this top piece, I'm gonna try something I've never done before. I've made this in an extremely thin part that's gonna be very flexy. And I'm going to wrap it around the servo. And I've left a long tail here because I'm not sure exactly how long the tail needs to be. But we're gonna see what that does to the sticker inside. So let's apply it and bend it. When the frame's black, this is gonna look so freaking good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this still needs a little bit of work, but um, I'm gonna alter the frame a little bit now that I've done a little test fit here, seeing how all the stickers line up, where they work. But I, I guess my biggest question is to our subscriber who submitted this idea. Am I doing your concept justice? Is this looking cool and awesome? So, and like I said earlier, the servo is gonna be in the head, which will make the jaw come up and down. And then we're going to make a fiery piece that screws to those four holes. And so we'll have a wedge coming out here that looks like fire. Fire! And I, I will say the tail, the tail, you need a self-writer that goes this way to run a tail. Um, I'm gonna see if I can add that, but I might not be able to. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this robot. Do you like it? Is it coming out cool? Do you think I should change something? Let me know. All right, guys, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye. And here you see on the terror plate, we have Manta. This was their last opponent. Look how deadly he looks. I must touch the blade. No! 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 no. <laughs>